Okay, CP, I got a lot of flack because I've said over and over so much has been building around here. I'm in the tri-state area. Yeah. You know what? I hear it. You know, Mike Vaccaro, yeah. outstanding writer for uh, the New York Post, talking about this is a team that's a contender now and all these things. And all I just said was they have to relax because there's still a team that I don't know if they have a solid number three score or even a number two. How do you look at this team compared to last year's team that surprisingly lost to the Miami Heat in that second round? Man, I, I got to take this back to, to the R.J. Barrett trade for O.G. Ananobi because while it was, a, uh, I thought it was a great trade for the Knicks based on what they paid for and based on what they got in terms of how he fit the team, I expected them to have some growing pains, take a step back with the loss of Emmanuel quickly. They had Mitchell Robinson has been out. Now Julius Randle has been out. And I expected them to, to take a step back. But this team has still been punching forward, and that's behind the brilliance of Jalen Brunson. I mean, I, I just pulled up a clip on, on – uh, on my Knicks, Knicks fan TV account on Twitter from Fred Katz of The Athletic who talked about, this was from our preseason conversation, and he said, look, there's people in the Knicks organization who believe that Jalen Brunson is due for another leap in his second year with wow. the Knicks, and that's after having a brilliant year last year. And his reasoning was, if you look at the way that he finished the second half of the regular season last year and headed into the playoffs. I mean, in that second round against the Miami Heat, he was one of the few people, it was Jokic, it was Brunson, it was Murray, who was able to solve that Miami Heat defense. Eric Spolstra mm -hmm. was speaking so glowingly of Jalen Brunson. So he's been a major part of that. And, you know, the, the way that they've come together around OG Ananobi defensively, the way that they've been able to rebound the ball, yes, they still need uh, another reliable score because when they head into the playoffs the biggest question mark is going to be Julius Randle the health of Julius Randle and how he performs at that level but I still do think that once the playoffs start and, and defenses are locking in on you and they're taking away your strengths you're still going to need that other guy that can go out there and get his own and I still think the Knicks are still missing that that third reliable option that can go out there and get it for him in a big spot all right Ham Tony and I'm, I'm gonna see what you know about Precious Achulia. The, yeah. With that trade, f with him coming there and uh, the, inserting him in the starting lineup, this dude getting you 16 rebounds. Is yeah. this something that you look at and say, where's our bench? I mean, you got Hart starting. I mean, these are things that you factor in. Yeah. But when, when Julius gets back, so give me your impression yeah. of – Precious. Precious. Yeah, early impressions was, man, this guy has no hands. He's looking lost out there. I mean, this guy just looks like a throw in in the trade, which we needed the center depth. But I'm like, man, once once Jericho Sims comes back, once Mitchell Robinson comes back, we're going to have to move Precious to the third, third spot. But he has filled in admirably for those guys. He's getting after it on the boards. A lot of times, you know, OG Ananobi has missed two games right now. We have Precious Achua guarding Pascal Siakam. He's out there trying to cover wings and, and giving it a, a good go, especially on the defensive end. In their win, in their come from behind win over the Pacers in crunch time, yeah, Precious Achua, he gets a tip in, he gets a block shot, and he gets a steal and a couple of key rebounds in crunch time. And that's what you need from your bench. He's filled in and been a typical Tom Thibodeau guy. He's going to play tough. He's going to play gritty. He's going to play defense. And now he's becoming a fan favorite very fast. And so the key thing here for the Knicks, as they've been the hottest team in the NBA, is they've done it with their depth. And Precious Achua definitely mm -hmm. deserves those accolades. Yeah, he one, is. One, I, go ahead, I go have ahead. one more. I have one more. And when, I, when you look at it, what do you think, the, you know, as far as the bench, yeah. as far as the Knicks bench, is that what is going to carry them on in the playoffs? Because you can go deeper now. Yes. Yes, I, I believe it is for a few reasons. You know, with Josh Hart, with Precious, I mean, they have the defense, they have the toughness, and they can get boards. I still think they are still missing that playmaker, shot creator at the guard spot, although Miles McBride has been playing very well in that role. It's more his role has been more of three and D, whereas I think in the playoffs they're going to need somebody who can help create for that second unit and get them going. 
as well as create for him for himself. And so, you know, the bench, they have their guys. They have their guys that can defend, rebound. They have shooting. I think they just need just one more playmaker off that bench to help kind of bring things together because when Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle are sitting there on the bench, you're going to need somebody that can hold a lead or maintain, you know, striking distance so that when you bring Brunson in, he's the most clutch player in the NBA right now, I believe. He can take you home. Yes, he is CP, the franchise creator of Nick Fan TV and the NBA Report also. And a and, Hamptonian. Hamptonian. And a Hamptonian. And yeah, he's also a Sirius there. XM NBA radio host here on Sirius XM Radio. Uh, so, uh, CP, when you look at Julius Randle, some great news. It, obviously, the shoulder injury is not as, as serious as it was thought of. And, obviously, he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. But uh, would you say that I, – I put I put – Julius on the list with Joel Embiid, Paul George. Uh, I think I can't remember the other player right off there. But those three guys there that no matter what, they're going to be judged, maybe even James Harden, yeah. to be judged what they do in the postseason compared to what they do in the regular season because he's already made another all-star uh, selection. Is that the same belief and feel that you have, and that's something around sitting around a lot of Knicks fans? Like, it's great what we see in the regular season, but it has to translate to the postseason when it comes to Julius Randle? Yeah, Gerald, that, you, you hit it right on the head. I mean, regular season, he's been great again. Another all-star appearance. If he would have stayed healthy here, you could see him in, in an all-NBA in one of those teams. And I got to give Julius Randle a lot of credit because if you listen to a lot of his sound bites in the off-season, he talked about um, studying the game a bit more. Uh, especially when he was out re- rehabilitating his ankle last year, looking at film, looking at the fact that he sometimes takes bad shots. And that that is often was often the critique with him. He's taking long twos out of rhythm and not going to his strengths, which is utilizing his physical skill set, his agility, and attacking mismatches to the basket. Meet me at the cup. And that is what he was doing so well before he got injured for this team because it not only allowed him to get high efficiency points at the rim and also draw contact and, and get to the free throw line, but allowed him to then play make as he's breaking the defense down in the paint, collapsing the defense, then he can spray it out there to his three-point shooters. So I have to give him a lot of credit for just – having that self-awareness to adjust this game to make his team better. But as you said, you know, when, when, in, in the postseason, it, it's really where it's, he's going to be measured. And, and like you said, you know, do you think that he learned from the postseason in the past yeah. to make sure that he's a better basketball player now? I have to hope so. That That, that is the hope right now, Rick. You know, in, in their win mm-hmm. over the Cleveland Cavaliers, he re-injured the ankle. He also had a tough matchup. I mean, Evan Mobley was, was one of the best defenders last year in the league. And then the next round, he's got to go up against his friend Bam Adebayo, who's also uh, one of the best defenders there. So, you know, the way that defense is scheming on him is they're going to force him to make a decision. He's got to move the ball. He's got to play quick. He's got to play fast. And he has to anticipate where the double teams are coming from. And so you have to hope that he's learned from the loss to the Miami Heat and a few years back the loss to the Atlanta Hawks. The difference here now is that he has a Jalen Brunson to take some of the load off of him. OG Ananobi, hopefully he comes back healthy. A reliable outside three-point threat that the Knicks really didn't have up until now. You know, you have OG Ananobi, you have Dante DiVincenzo, you've added a lot of shooting efficiency to your lineup. So those guys, those three guys can help bail him out. He just has to make those the right decisions, especially in the playoffs. Man, yeah, let's talk about this game tonight. CP against the Lakers. Yeah. Obviously, LeBron coming AD coming to New York, it's going to be buzzing. The energy gonna is going to be It's going to be buzzing, It's, it, it, yeah. it's going to be off the chain yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Are they How, playing? Because well, they ain't playing so. Boston. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, what that's I'm the saying. Biggest thing. But it's still the Lakers. Yeah. It's still the Lakers. And there's been this little talk and stuff like that, perhaps. Well, first and foremost, let's deal with tonight's yeah. game. What is going to be the key for the Knicks to keep this winning streak going? Well, if Anthony Davis and LeBron James get back, it's, it's going to be having to tangle with those two. And for the Knicks, if OG Ananobi and Quinton Grimes are out, you're still down two of your better perimeter defenders. And so with OG Ananobi, he's a guy that he can guard AD, he can guard LeBron, he can guard Austin Reeves. You may see him on all three of those guys. So losing that versatility kind of hurts. 
You have the Lakers coming in off of a hot win over the Boston Celtics without those two guys. Their offense came to play. Their defense came to play as well. So for the Knicks, on one hand, it's going to have to be defensively. Just just see. You don't know. The thing about the Lakers is they've been so inconsistent offensively all year. You don't know which team is going to show up. But the Knicks can't overlook that. They have to be ready for the team that won in Boston and be ready to guard the three-point line where the Lakers were hot on, um, on Thursday night. And then, you know, when, when LeBron and AD get in there, they're going to have to figure out who's going to take those matchups. As we just said, it could be Precious Achua being very busy against both of those guys. Isaiah Hartenstein as well has, has helped on the boards. And then offensively, it's, it's Brunson time. You know, with the Lakers losing Jared Vanderbilt in the second half of that game against the Celtics, they lost their pre- premier wing defense, their versatility as well. So I'm going to be curious to see how the Lakers attack Jalen Brunson. You could see more Torian Prince, more Cam Reddish, some of their wing defenders trying to take him out the game, but he's been so locked in. I really don't think it matters at this point. You know, when I, when, when, and we're still talking about the – I'm not talking about the Knicks no more. Who do you see the biggest uh, presence yeah. outside of the Celtics? Yeah. I mean, Joel Embiid is down. What do you see the Knicks surging up even further to catch the Milwaukee yeah. Bucks? One and a half games behind the Bucks. You have the Bucks still <laughs> trying to get things in order under Doc Rivers. I think they have a potential to, to catch those guys. Uh, you also have the Cleveland Cavaliers. You, we can't overlook the Ooh. Cleveland Cavaliers who are playing well. And, and this is what I feared when they lost Garland and Mobley. I said, look, they still have the ability to tread water, especially with Donovan Mitchell at the helm. And then you haven't seen Cleveland at their best yet. That's my whole point. And now they got Garland back. Mobley should be on the way back in a couple weeks. And they're playing their best ball. So CP, stop yeah. that, man. Why are you doing that? You <laughs> know doggone well the Listen. Knicks match up really well. That team is not the same team since they lost to the Knicks. And I said it before, from a psychological yeah. standpoint, the Knicks own them. You know the Knicks not worried about them. Uh-uh, no. They well, went in there. And, uh-uh. Well, I, I'm not saying to be worried. I'm not saying to be worried, Gerald. But you but, know the Knicks right. not worried about no, them. No, Stop no, it. they're not worried. Better than but they, they do have one key matchup coming up in the regular season later on this year, and that could determine who wins the second, the third, or the fourth seed. And now you're talking about home court in the first round. So I think it is important just to see where they are, especially in the regular season, and Make sure that you win the season series against them later on the season to uh, to claim your spot because they're going to be neck and neck all year. Yeah, CP, the franchise creator of Knicks Fan TV as well as the NBA Report and also Sirius XM. One more, NBA. one more. Ham- Hamptonian, Hamptonian. The real H-U. The real H-U. Hey, you. Real H U. Yeah, you see it right there, right? Home. Absolutely. <laughs> a, a, the real H U. Uh, before we let you get on out of here, there's no, been so much H- talk. No, Howard is real H-U. They had it first. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the home by the sea. How about that? The, the home by the, the sea. I like that. There you go. The home by the sea. Yep. But there's been a lot of buzz and stuff, and even Rich Paul came out and made a statement uh, yesterday stating the fact is that LeBron is not asking for a trade. Yeah. And he will not be traded. Uh, but there's been, obviously, he wants to play with his son if he decides to come out this year. And clearly, if he opts out this summer or gives the indication that he wants out, how much do you how much would the Knicks would you want the Knicks to be at the top of that list? And could you see LeBron coming to New York and be a part of this mix? It might give it going to have to give up a lot. Yeah. But if he does it and comes next year, how much of the excitement that, you know, they missed out before would return? In your opinion. You know, Gerald and Rick, I'm, I'm looking at this latest LeBron James trade hoopla as just another attempt for him to put pressure on Rob Palenka and those guys to make a move at the deadline. They just lost Vanderbilt. The West is on fire with OKC and the Timberwolves and all these guys. He wants them to, to go make a move so to help them get through in the playoffs. But for LeBron James to come to New York, that ship has sailed not once but twice already. I mean, wow. no, I mean, Gerald, he's got so much gray hairs. He's looking like a grandpa out there, man. But now, Tom Brady now, did it for my beloved now, Tampa but, Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, but now, I mean, healthy. healthy. He's still a winner. Healthy. Yeah. And the, yes. right? One thing about when Tom went to the Buccaneers, they had every all the infrastructure was laid out for him. A, a great offensive right. line. He he didn't get anything dirty. LeBron James, he's missing games left, right, and center over the last three years. That would be a same old Knicks move, Gerald, just for the headlines and not for the substance. Say no. We got a good thing going right now. It's orange and blue skies out. We got Spike going to be at the game tonight. Maybe Magic shows up, man. The Garden is rocking right now without LeBron James. 
It's good to see Clutch and CAA mend defenses because that could unleash a couple possibilities for the Knicks in the offseason and point. beyond, Great but not, not LeBron James. Not LeBron James. Great point. Great point, mm. CP. Uh, it's going to be entertaining. I always said, too, I think that also, too, I, may, I said it was the last question, but I want to throw this one in here. You look at the stretch where the Knicks, and it's one of those teams, like I had said before, with the Pelicans. It's the same situation that applies for the Knicks. They close out the season uh, at – Orlando, and then they open back up at Philly. Those two games right there, how much of an importance are for the Knicks to have a strong showing to close out the season, to yeah. close out the first half of the season, and then get right back into the thick, thick of things, playing against a Philadelphia 76ers team yeah. to start the second half of the season. And then, oh, by the way, you welcome Boston, Boston to the guard. Yeah. Yeah, two days later. that That's when the real ball begins. Look, they, they're playing very well, 14-2 over the stretch, but they've been very fortunate to capitalize on a home-heavy schedule against some subpar teams. They had a tough December, so things are equaling are, are equaling out for them, but now the test begins, and I hope OG Ananobi is back healthy for some of these games because you want to see how they stack up defensively against Philly again. They beat Philly already, but you want to see that again. Uh, they lost to Orlando twice. They lost to Boston about four times already, three, four times already, so... They've got to start earning their lunch against some of the, the tougher teams in the East to really establish themselves here. Yeah, and uh, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. Hopefully to see exactly what they do during the trade deadline and looks like they might have the makings of getting Kyle Lowry on that mix there. So another one of them old oh, players. Oh, no. <laughs> They'll do it. Oh, no. They will do it. They will do it. But you know what? Go New York. Go New York go. No, but that's why I love talking to CP. Uh, the franchise because again he keeps it real and it's not going overboard and 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 going all crazy about the first half of the season and really really looking at it again if you haven't gone to the CP uh, the Knicks fan TV site definitely check it out it's so interactive very impressive and it's oh, like I'm about to get on there since I know the homeboy you gotta, you gotta come I'm, through Rick you I, gotta come through you man. know I will I will I will definitely listen CP man always a pleasure man great job as always continue doing what you do man and definitely look forward to talking down the line because uh looks like you said blue and orange it's bubbling the city's bubbling and you know it's what bubbling. it's a good thing if the Knicks are able to do what they're supposed to do absolutely man OGs thank you very much for the time enjoy the weekend and hopefully we can do this again Absolutely, done deal. He is <laughs> CP, the franchise creator of Knicks Fan TV and the NBA Report, also Sirius XM NBA radio host, and he is an Hamptonio. Coming up. Hamptonio? We'll, Hamptonian. Hamptonian. <laughs> Hamptonian. Crackers out your mouth. Crackers out your mouth. Son. Coming up, we'll get back in the board and talk about the NBA action. Sad. Looking at tonight's. Uh, action on the floor. It's the Bottom Line Sports Show right here on Sirius XM <laughs> NBA Radio, Channel 86, and, of course, on your Sirius XM app.